Lately, Bravo has been knucking and bucking and ready to fight. How did the network get so ghetto? And how did Real Housewives of Atlanta and Potomac play into that stereotype? Well, I have some new information that may answer all of those questions and more right after this. What's up, kinfolk, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, do me a favor and subscribe. If you already are subscribed, do me a favor and get notified so you'll know whenever I upload new videos to the channel. All right, kinfolk, come on into the house. We have a lot to talk about, and it centers around this new nook if you book culture over at Bravo. How did the network get so hood and how did the ladies of potomac and atlanta feed into that stereotype well i have an inside analysis that may answer all of those questions and here it goes first off let me say i know you saw the thumbnail video with portia and uh, monique i'm not in any kind of way trying to say that they are ghetto i'm just saying that their past actions on their um particular franchises um, kind of led uh, into this stereotype of, you know, physical altercations becoming the norm on these shows. So here we go. The original sin that led Bravo to becoming more so uh, ghetto is this. When Bravo did not fire Portia for attacking Kenya, it opened the door for a lot of other housewives to go down this road of this type of negative behavior. Now listen, I'm not saying Portia um, is solely responsible for all of this. And I'm not saying that, you know, she should be singled out in any type of way. I'm just saying her actions and Bravo's inaction led to a lot of this what we see right now. Now I'll be honest with you. Portia was definitely in the wrong for attacking Kenya. Some people say that she was provoked. Some people say, well, she's an adult. She should be able to control her emotions. She was at work. But to her credit, I will say this. She was technically still a newbie. She has the lights and cameras in her face. She's still trying to technically learn, you know, how this reality TV show works. So I can get how I can see how her emotions got the best of her. But in that same light, Bravo should really have um, reprimanded her more than what they did. And what they did was they demoted her to a friend of the show. Now, some people say, well, that's her punishment. But not really. You demoted her to a friend of the show, but at the same time, you still paid her. So, in actuality, you're still paying her to perform so uh, negatively on the show. And when you're paying her to do that and continue to do that, it sends mixed messages to the other housewives. What is that mixed message? That mixed message is this. Other housewives can see that what Portia got away with of physically attacking Kenya while they're at work. So other housewives can say, well, I can do this. I can do that. And as long as it's not physically attacking someone, I won't lose my peach. Now, what is this? What is that? One thing that I noticed, it is starting uh, malicious rumors. And if we look at the Real Housewives of Atlanta, not so long after Portia was giving her pitch back, we saw the rumors that Phaedra um, started with uh, Candy on the show. Now, whether Phaedra heard that out in the streets or whether Phaedra made that up, the thing of the, the, the problem is, Phaedra did so very confidently and comfortably because she figured I can come over here and say what I want to say or perpetuate any type of rumor uh, that I want. But as long as I'm not physically attacking no one, I'm not going to lose my peach. And to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not condoning what Phaedra did, but I can see how she could think that. Because you have a castmate who literally could have caused and probably did in some ways bodily harm to another castmate but didn't get fired. So I can see that train of thinking like, okay, well, I can do this and I'm not going to get fired. 
And then what happened was that led to other women of other franchises seeing that fallout. And that's what brings us to Monique. Now, the same thing with uh with uh with Portia. I'm not trying to single Monique out, and I'm not trying to say that her emotions are not human and that she and that she made a mistake and things happen. I'm just saying that without having that blueprint of seeing that Portia attacked her castmate and didn't get any get didn't get into any real trouble by being fired, she probably felt the same way that um Fedra could have allegedly felt comfortable and confident knowing that I can attack this person and nothing happens. And as we can see, nothing did happen. From Monique's uh, point and from a lot of other sources, people say that Bravo actually did offer her um, her role as a uh, housewife for the next season, but it was Monique who turned it down, which I think was a smart move because she knew Bravo and Giselle... <clears throat> We're probably going to come at her and her family real hard this season. And she did the smart thing by getting out of that line of fire. However, that mixed messaging still remain that you can physically attack someone. And then have the lines blurred of whether you really felt like you were provoked or not. And still keep your job. Now, what does that do for the brand as a whole? This is what it does for the brand as a whole. Starting off with Andy. Andy says that, you know, he doesn't want that love and hip hop um, a stigma put on the Housewives franchise. But then that statement is very contradictory because you do not reprimand or you not punish the women in these franchises who perpetuate that love and hip hop brand. So are you trying to say you're fine with the black and brown cast being seen as quote unquote ghetto or love and hip hop material you just don't want that type of stigma placed on the white franchises you see that's the type of that's the type of gray area that you leave when you say one thing and your actions are not lining up to what you are saying and then for bravo what happens bravo and production because a lot of times when i say bravo i'm talking about production as well what happens is you start losing the trust of the fan base because we see you're saying one thing, but you're doing something totally different. <clears throat> and then we figure out, well, if you don't want the love and hip hop, hip hop stigma on the Real Housewives um, brand, then why are you allowing it to constantly be featured on the black uh, uh, shows and not necessarily on the white shows? What message are you trying to send to us as a fan base? And then people start losing confidence in production and in the network. The next thing that it does that I've noticed, I've noticed it on Twitter that the Real Housewives Twitter universe has become extremely toxic. I mean extremely toxic. And here is why. What happens is when you have Portia and Monique, two relatively young um, cast members on the show, they're going to, you know, draw in a younger audience. That younger audience seeing them fight and being physical with their castmates tend to be the same audience that tend to watch the Love and Hip Hop franchise or Bad Girls Club. Nothing wrong with that. I love good ratchet television every now and then like the next person, but I have a problem when it's trying to be inflicted on a brand of black and brown uh, television programming that is not centered around that type of behavior. And so what you have is you have those fans who are used to commenting and being ratchet and being derogatory in the comment section under those love and hip hop fight videos or bad girl video or bad girls club videos. And they bring that type of commentary over into the Real Housewives uh, Twitter universe. And let's be honest, that fan base, our fan base of core housewife uh, or viewers, we tend to like to throw shade, fun shade. <clears throat> And most of the time, we like to really stand for our favorite housewives. And for the longest, that is what our Twitter universe has been. Laughing at the shady moments, <clears throat> you know, giving our commentary, and standing for our fave. But when you have these new, um, younger um, viewers coming in with these mean, rude comments, then that makes the character of us who've been in the housewife universe, it makes us change the way we comment because... We're not coming in and allowing them to uh, attack us all with all this rudeness and nastiness. 
and not attack them back with equal or even more rudeness and nastiness. And so then the entire ecosystem becomes very toxic. And so that is the real reason why we've seen this change in, in the atmosphere when it comes to the Real Housewives of Atlanta franchise on Twitter. And you know, the last thing I want to I want to talk about is that you know we understand that physical altercations it drives our ratings. People want to see a fight, but the problem with that is that when you perpetuate that and celebrate that on the black franchises, then it really puts black women in a bad light. And let me tell you why, because you make it seem like or you get us try if you make it seem like you're trying to get us accustomed to seeing a group of black women being violent and vicious with one another you don't want to see us resolving conflicts with our words you don't want to see us throwing shade with our words you it seems if you're trying to create an environment to where black women cannot resolve situations unless they're fighting and so what happens is when that imagery is put out into the universe so much then it becomes, oh, in our everyday lives, when we see a group of black women sitting down to eat lunch or dinner, they probably gonna get, they probably gonna start fighting. We don't want to be sitting next to them. Or when a group of black women come into a restaurant, the person at the door might be like, you know what? I've seen on television, whenever you have a lot of group of black women, they're gonna be fighting. They might be cursing. You know what? We have no seating tonight. We're closed. We're done seating for the night. And that is the type of um, image that you are, prepare, uh, are perpetuating about black women in group settings. I think that uh, Bravo can fix this. Bravo really has to get back to the essence of what the Real Housewives of the Real Housewives franchise really was. It was looking at these women on the outside who seem to have the perfect lives, who seem to have comfortable lives, but looking behind their curtains and their doors and seeing the things that they struggle with. The sin and things they're trying to overcome, the see the things they're trying to create, and the trial and tribulations of trying to uphold a perfect image. And I think right now with Real Housewives of Atlanta, let's be honest, Real Housewives of Atlanta sets the trend for all women, all female group-based reality television, right? So right now, I think Bravo could fix it by allowing this season to be a season about sisterhood. Yeah, it'll be drama, it'll be conflicts, but they really should show how um, established. Mature, older women resolve these conflicts, some of the things that they're going through in their life that they're trying to overcome and um, be successful in. And I think that type of branding and that type of imagery will really serve Bravo well. It'll give them a break from this whole nuck if you buck type of entertainment, which I, for one, am getting a little bit tired of, to be perfectly honest with you. And I think when they do that, they can start the other franchises, particularly Potomac, to getting away from getting to like this dark uh, era and falling off a track to which the original premise was. Let's be honest, if you look at Real Housewives of Potomac, you can see that they're on that same trajectory that the Real Housewives of Atlanta was on right before things got dark after season 9 with the whole Candy and Phaedra and Portia falling out. You can see it's getting there because they keep poking the bear with certain cast members and they want them to take it there. I think for entertainment, I'm not sure, but if it is for entertainment, they should already see that that is not the right road that they want to go down. It turns fans off, fans stop watching, and then you're left holding a, a very successful franchise and trying to figure out why it's no longer working and how can you fix it. All right, Kim folk, that's my rant for this Saturday. If you enjoyed this uh, commentary, please like, share, subscribe. Tell me what you think. Do you think my assessment on how Bravo got ghetto is correct? If you think it is, let me know down in the comment section below. If you think I'm wrong, let me know down in the comment section below as well. And I'll see you guys over on the next video. Peace.